So I did kind of skip ahead a little bit. You guys know I've been doing a one volume a month of Blackwater. So I just kind of, uh, I felt like before I got into some more heavy fantasy, I wanted to just, you know, take a step back, get back to Perdido, see what's going on with the Caskey family. And I'm actually considering not doing the monthly thing with this anymore because, guys, this has such a large cast. And I'm starting to forget some of those familial connections, whose kids are who, because the cast just keeps going because this, this series goes through, like, I don't know. Right now, I feel like it's went through, like, the first, it's been through, like, 20 years already. So I'm thinking we're going to go through generations of this family, kind of like Jay Legacy did. I think we're going to do that, but, you know, we're going to take our time instead of skipping around. No, I'm not taking any shots. I like Jay Legacy. Uh, but with this, uh, I, I'm considering not doing it once a month because I feel like I'm going to start to forget some stuff. So as I'm about, I don't know, midway through book three right now, which is called uh, uh, The House, I'm starting to think I might just run this through. Because uh, again, I, I feel like I'm starting to forget some stuff. I don't know. We'll talk about that more in a minute. But this, uh, again, guys, I think this is incredible. And I'm not even halfway there yet. I have not seen anything like this since maybe Needful Things, where you've got like this whole community and we're just kind of like going through this whole town kind of thing. Now, it's not quite as large because it does focus more on just the Caskey family, but there are some townsfolk that you'll see come around again and again. But the cast just keeps getting bigger and bigger because, you know, uh, new people come in, old people go out, and then they'll come back. And it's just, you forget that you're reading a horror story sometimes because you get so wrapped up in this family drama that every once in a while he has to remind you, oh yeah, there's a big scary monster involved with all this. And there's some creepy stuff that is really being unveiled in volume three here that I didn't expect. And I have no idea where it's going. But this is, I mean, this guy's an amazing writer. Uh, I can see, I had no idea that he was the one who wrote Beetlejuice, by the way, the screenplay for Beetlejuice. But I can see it. This guy, he's, he's really, really great. So if you're into South, Southern Gothic, into kind of like that family drama kind of period. Uh, I, I think that, uh, not really that period, but in that time period from uh, like 1920s, uh, like I said, we're coming up on World War II era now. And uh, it's just, it's getting really great. Uh, I just, I can't even imagine where it's going, but so many threads this guy is balancing just perfectly. Uh, yeah, I feel like this doesn't get enough credit for what it is. And I'm not even halfway done. I can't wait to see uh, where it does go. But uh, yeah, I'll be finishing up probably I think the house here, probably this week, because, you know, each one of these these volumes is only, you know, I don't know, 150, 180 pages, I think, for each one of these. But uh, it's really easy to blow through, and I can't wait to see where it goes. 